said more bread. That's what we heard about today already in the readings. Bread, bread, and more bread. The word bread, or the, the, the movement towards something to eat, is spoken of 271 times in the Bible. 83 of those times are found in the New Testament. And we know, we've heard the scriptures before. Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily <clears throat> Matthew 26, 26 says, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread. Psalm 37, 25 says, I have seen, been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. All right, you get the hint, right? What I got to do is one of my favorites. When he answered and said unto them, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah, y'all get the hint. Bread, bread, and more bread. But here it is, the children of Israel have just now been freed, right? They're free to go. They're, 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 they're in the wilderness. They're in between what they knew and what they have no clue about. They're in that place of, you know, at least while we were yet slaves, we knew what we had. And now we're out here in this new place called the wilderness, and we don't know what to expect. A lobster, interesting enough, you know, we usually see lobster when they're full grown. Big shell, you know, hanging out in the, in the tank in the supermarket or the fish market looking for us to like, Please don't buy me. But lobsters, what we don't know, lobsters start off small. And at some point in their life, they have to get rid of their old shell. Because if they don't, what that shell becomes is their coffin. Because if they grow larger, and if they don't get out of the old shell, they die. So there's a period in their lives when they're out from the old shell, and they're waiting on the new shell to grow, that they're real vulnerable. The currents come by and dash them around. I would dare say they look like good prey. That looks like some good food. Can you imagine getting a lobster without the shell? You don't even got to do all the work. Easy eating. And yet, that lobster, I'm sure, during that period while it's waiting for that new shell to come, is thinking about, man, that other old shell was really safe. Children of Israel found themselves without a shell. So what did they start doing? They complained. Lord, 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 at least that we have leeks to eat back there. Why did you bring us out here to die? And oftentimes we would say, well, we're not like them. I don't know why they didn't realize God was blessing them. I would never do such a thing. But where the people who pray say, Lord, if you just get me out of this, if you bring me to a new place, get me someplace, Lord, where I don't have to deal with that. And when God picks you up and places you in that new place, you go, why well, I have to deal with this? Lord, it's a whole new mess. Because the reality of it is, the place where you're going doesn't, that does not necessarily mean it's going to be better. So it's going to be a little different. I was once told, I repeat it constantly, we like to live on a mountaintop. And I don't know about you, but I love having mountaintop experiences. If you don't know what that is, it's, it's that time when everything is going wonderful. The sun is shining. My bills are paid. My kids are calling, not asking for money. Everything is wonderful. The church is blossoming. No one is sick and no hospital visits. It's a great place to be. But it don't last long. It doesn't last long. Because at any given moment, you realize that there's another mountain over there. Because this mountain is all dried up now. I need to get to that mountain. Well, I got a story for you. Unless you're really, really good at flying, the only way to get to 
the other side is to go down to the valley and back up. That means every time you come off that mountain, you've got to go through something to get those legs stronger to climb back up on the other side. So they went through it. But the greatness of God is even in their complaining, he provided. He provided them with bread. He gave them just enough for the day. Let's stay there for a moment. God told them, gather all you need for today. He didn't say worry about tomorrow. Don't gather enough for the week. Gather enough for today. You see, the problem becomes when we become hoarders. We like to make sure we got enough for the next month. Turn our back on other people. That's mine. You know how little kids do it? Mine. But we do the same as adults. We hoard it up. We want to make sure God is blessing you. He says, I'm blessing you for today. And you're going, no God, you're blessing me for it. And then when everything begins to fall to our fingers, we want to know, Lord, well, why are you taking it away? He said, I gave you that for today. You see, the food that God gives us is just for today. The bread of heaven is for today. Why? Because if you get enough bread for the next week, why are you going to go back to Jesus? He said, I am the bread of life. If you get enough bread today, you don't need to go back to Jesus for bread tomorrow. You're good to go. I don't need no more. I'm, I got all I need. He says, I am. I am the bread of life. So when he talks about that bread, yes, we need to gather. And yes, I'm not saying go and be prepared for tomorrow and the next day and so forth. I'm saying that when it comes to Jesus, you got to go back every day. That anointing that you got today, that blessing you got today, guess what? That's today's blessing. You need to go back to tomorrow's blessing. And the next day, and the next day. He said, I am the bread of life. But unless we keep going back, that bread will become like what happened in the children, to the children of Israel. When they gathered too much, the next morning it became worms. It was no good. They, they couldn't eat it. You ever left the bread sitting out and forgot about it? They came back and went to get a slice of bread and you got all that green stuff on the bottom. They got all moldy. Well, I used to be from old school. We cut that off stick my toast in. We don't work like that with God. See, the problem is some of us are eating stale bread. We're surviving on stale old bread. Because we've done it this way. This is how we survive. Lord, I've been going like this for some while and I'm making it. Lord, saints would simply put, I have fresh bread for you every day. There's fresh manna for you every day. Will you come and get some? Will you come to the table every day and be fed? Because if you keep running on stale bread, that stale bread will get you by. There was an author who said it best. He said, if we don't eat the fresh bread of heaven daily, we will die on the crumbs of the world. If we don't survive off of the fresh bread of God, we will die on the crumbs of the world. Because the world will always throw you a crumb. But God will give you something fresh that will keep you going daily. I did. It becomes difficult now as we read the gospel and there it is, all this crowd, 5,000 plus that Jesus had just fed. And now they come to him, Lord, show us a sign. I'm not gonna lie, I had to read, read that a couple of times. Wait a minute, didn't he just feed you? Show us a sign. What sign will you show us? I love Jesus' calm because I'd be like, are y'all blind? <laughs> what, I just, what about all the extra prayer? No, he was calm. He says, no, it's not about the sign. He said, I've already given you a sign. He said, what must we do to do the work of God the Father? And this is always gets me because Jesus 
always keeps it so simple. Just believe on him who he has said. You mean just believe? Just, just believe. Is it that simple? All we have to do is believe? And you've heard me talk about it all the time. There's one thing about belief that has an issue with, you know. I believe a lot of things. Some people actually believe they can fly. Without a plane. You can't. Belief is more than just a word. I'm looking for this quote. Here it is. The word belief in the Bible means more than simply agreeing in our minds that something might be true. It means trust. It says, suppose you are on this nice trip with a group of people going to the jungle and they have this nice bridge that goes across a nice big canyon. And you believe the bridge can hold you up, right? You even believe it when you see other people walk across the bridge. <laughs> but until you get up and walk across that bridge, your belief is useless. Unless your belief causes you to do something like trust in God, what good is your belief? What good is your belief? And I, 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 I get into trouble because the world constantly tells us if, I, if you believe it, you can do it. If you believe it, you can have it. And there's, there's, there's some truth to that, but it's missing something. You can believe in yourself all you want, but if you don't believe that there's someone greater than you that's giving you the strength to go forward, you keep believing in yourself and see how far you get. Walt Disney said it, if you believe in a thing, believe in it all the way. Implicity and unquestionably. Anything is possible if you only believe. Yeah, it's a good Disney movie. <laughs> but the reality is, what are we believing? Because the world has gotten us to believe in ourselves. I can. We got more self-help books uh, in our libraries and in our bookstores than anything else. How can I do it? I can go, I can. But there's a problem with the I equation because the I equation says it's all about me. And yes, it's important to believe in yourself. Yes, it's important to have some self-esteem to be able to stand. But I got news for you. If you're only standing on yourself, you will fall. I believe, says I believe in, in one who's able to keep me from falling. I believe in a God who can hold me up when I get a little wobbly. <coughs> I believe in a God that says that how I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, your belief has to be founded in something. All the bread in the world is not going to feed you or get you nowhere if you don't know where your bread is coming from. Second point is simply this. Jesus said, I am the bread. Whoever eats of me will never be hungry. Whoever drinks, we will never be thirsty. But where's your provision coming from? We've gotten comfortable depending on ourselves. We know that how I got a good job, I got this, I got that. And that works great until that day when that job is gone. Then what? Then you find yourself standing there going, God, why? Why did you take this from me? And God says, well, I gave it to you. You never said thank you. You never said I appreciate it. You never took the time to give me part of what I allowed you to make. But yet when it's gone, you want to come cry to me about, you took it. You forgot I gave it. Give thanks for the blessing of the bread that he provides. But it's also important to know where your bread comes from. There's a story told at the end of World War II that the Allies had gathered up, gathered up all of the children and, and put them in an orphanage and made sure they were eating well and they were well taken care of, but they could not sleep. The children would not get a good night's sleep. And they couldn't figure out what the problem was. They kept making sure that they had enough food and everything they needed and they were warmth and they were loved, but then they would not sleep well at night. It wasn't until one of the villagers said, this is what you need to do. When they're getting ready to go to bed, take a piece of bread and put it in their hand. And then hold on to their bread and watch how well they slept. You see, they couldn't sleep 
brought because they didn't know what was going to happen in the morning. They didn't know where their next meal was coming from. The children were worried that they would wake up in the morning and be hungry all over again. But when they had that bread in their hand, they knew one thing for sure. When they woke up, they had something to eat. That is it. That's how it is with Jesus. When we go to bed holding on to the, the goodness of God, we know that when we wake up, that blessing is right there waiting for us. We know that no matter what the day holds, what we're going to deal with, I wake up holding on to Jesus. But you see, when, in order to wake up holding on to Jesus, you got to go to bed with Jesus. you got to lay down with him. He needs to be the first thing on your mind in the morning and the last thing on your mind before you go to bed. Lord, if it be that will, allow me to see a new day. Lord, by the way, thank you for the one I just went through. All the ups and downs, all the bumps, all the bruises, but I made it. I wasn't sure I was going to make it today, Lord, because there were some folks I, I, I might have had to tell a little something to. But I made it. That car that swerved in front of me, God, that you allowed to miss me? Thank you, Lord, because I made it. When I went into the bank and they told me my account had zero, and Lord, I knew there was money in there yesterday, and you worked it out? Thank you. Take the time to be precious. You know, people say, well, you say the same thing all the time. Well, there's a reason I say it all the time, because it's something you've got to sneak in. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Today is not promised. 